Good afternoon, this is Tamara Sweeney from Love Dominates. Um, today's video is years of gaslighting, manipulation, lies, um, alienation, court corruption. So I'm going to give you just another couple behaviors that Hopefully will help you guys in your own situation. Um, but I have been, I had asked for a divorce back in 2012. Um, it took us three years to get a divorce. We finally got divorced in June of 2015. And finally in June of 2019, we were supposed to settle all our Assets, which we only had one, which was this marital house. So you can see in all my past videos how I've come to the door, how I've come to the property. Um, just to go back on this, I was the sole owner of this property. I was the sole owner and sole person on the mortgage in 2004. 2007, the other partner or other parent had asked me or had told me we had to refinance and asked me to sign the document. I did because I believed in him. I loved him because he was my husband. So I trusted him. I signed it without reading it. <laughs> anyway, that was to, it, he would tricked me and he basically was put onto the deed. Then from there, I was always solely on the mortgage. So when we, were going through divorce, the judge never took me off the mortgage. I was threatened to leave this house. Um, I ended up leaving to keep the peace. Um, I felt threatened for my own life, my own sanity, so I left. And that caused me all kinds of problems. I actually stayed here and changed the locks. My first lawyer told me, you better go fix those locks and change them again, because you're gonna get in a lot of trouble. And then he told me to leave the house. What lawyer does that? So anyway, I leave the house. It takes us three years to get through this divorce. Um, the other parent never had to provide uh, discovery, was never uh, held accountable for his um, actions and what he did not supply the courts and what he did supply was all fraud. IRS, they tried to make me believe that he had no money. Uh, the business had no money. I got absolutely nothing. I had a little bit of support per month, uh, but I lost all my children. I never had a custody hearing. It was just brainwashing on the children. Um, I would come to the house, the kids would scatter. I would come into the house, they'd hide in the bathroom. They'd run into the woods or the other parent would have them sleep in another uh, neighbor's house and they wouldn't be here. So now we are here and it's time to sell this asset. And it says on the divorce decree that I would make 65%. He would make 35%, 10% would go, or one tenth would go to taxes, which he did not pay on his own personal and business taxes. And I'm getting, I had liens put on me um, IRS liens put on me and now they're back in his name um, but they use that to say that he has no money anyway it's been a hard battle but I'm just tracking the behaviors I'm tracking everything I track the lawyers I track the therapists I track everyone that's involved in this case and basically it has come up with a lot of fraud, a lot of corruption. Um, so here we are. Uh, my divorce decree um, also stated that uh, the other parent had to have, have the house up in March 31st. Uh, he tried to get a lawyer, someone that was my son's friend and they were just jamming it down my throat, sign here, sign here, without me having any input whatsoever. So I denied that. I had offered three other 
realtors, but he never responds and either does uh, the other parent's attorney. They never respond. So the attorney had everything to do with his, with the other parent's illegal actions. So the other, uh, or, the things that they said on the ordered uh, divorce decree was sell the house by March 31st or get it up on the market by March 31st. Uh, the other parent has to be out of the house um, either when my son, the last child, turns 18, which was in September of 2019, or the day he graduates. He graduated June 14th, still did not get out of the house. He was supposed to keep the property, um, maintain it, and pay the mortgage. He did not. During the uh, this time period in eight years, he didn't make the payments. Like He made about eight to ten late payments, um, enough to destroy my credit. That's their intention, to destroy me. Since January, actually February 2019, the other parent did not pay the mortgage on this house and now it's in foreclosure. So also the other parent purchased another house in Sarasota, Florida um, in December of 2018. So he knew, he knew, the lawyers knew, and they're all in conspiracy, um, and even the police department knew, um, that he just wanted to get out of here and abandon the house and leave this mess for me to clean up. And the ultimate goal is for me to have no equity. And that's where it's going to right now, and that's why I'm going live. Um, Back in June of June 22nd, I came up to the property because not only my son, but I got texts from neighbors saying that uh, the other spouse was uh, disregarding and disposing of my property. So I came out, I was videotaping what happened. My ex spouse calls the police department and they come arrest me on the property, and I was thrown in the Montgomery County correctional facility for 18 hours. I'll show you the clips on that later, but how does the police get involved in a civil matter? They had no warrant for my arrest. No affidavit was signed. Um, they're stating that they have a certified letter that the sergeant from Upper Providence Police Department sent me a year ago. So the little green cards, a certified letter from the police department. Think about that. What police officer or sergeant does that? Usually you get an order from the judge, not the police department. That's a civil matter. So anyway, I was arrested for a criminal matter of defiant trespassing. And that has held my life back extremely. Still going through it, but this is what they do. Um, I'm in superior court because they put false charging liens and judgments on me to make sure that number one, I do not get any equity out of the house. And number two, that I pay the other partner so that I pay his IRS tax liens. So here we are. I'm going to go to the parental alienation part of it. I'm allowed into the house. I come into the house. It's a mess. Um, and the things that he left behind were, it was kind of creepy, actually. I come into the house. Everything is the same from when I left in 2012. Just never touched. Um, my closet was filled with clothes hanging up on the hangers. He took them off the hangers, threw them in a bag. I have pictures of this. Threw it all on the bottom in a disarray in my closet. I found love letters and Trojans thrown on the clothes and in the clothes. Um, I found pictures of me face down on beds full of urine from our dog. Um, and then the things that he left behind had everything that I had given the kids for Christmas gifts, 
My parents uh, gave my kids quilts. My mother quilted and quilted with love. There's one of them behind there. Um, she quilted from her heart, put a lot of thought into it, gave each child a quilt and they were left behind. So anything from my pregnancy all the way up to my oldest being 16 was left behind and here's the evidence. I had help from a friend. Um, we boxed everything up. I don't know if you can see that there. We put all their names on it, boxed them up. I don't know if they'll even, you know, as of now, they obviously don't want them. Um, this is how, this is how a parent teaches a child to not only disregard a parent, but to disregard your childhood memories, all your cousins, your grandparents, just forget about them. That's not your life. You know, that's a lot of people that must have been bad or must have been um, so vile that they had to run away from our family, you know? But if you look up, it's kind of funny because my family were of school teachers. Uh, they were very well liked in the community. My mother was a very giving person. Um, but there's only one person, one person that has a target on my head. And that is the other parent. And he will do anything, anything to destroy me. So we boxed up, you know, some other items. I won't even go into uh, the basement, but you can see here that these are things that came from my family uh, that have a lot of meaning to us. They came from my children. It was their childhood, all their friends, all their artwork from school, just disregarded, thrown out like a piece of trash. And that is a huge sign, a huge sign of another parent teaching a child not only to hate, but to disregard human life, disregard property, assets, and anything else. So I brought this with me because there's one thing you can't break, and that is the chain of love. This is the chain of love. They cannot break my love for my children. It'll never happen. And they know that. So that's why they work so hard to break that chain of love. So I'm almost to the end of this. I'm hoping people can relate to this. Please choose love over hate, compassion over judgment. Trust me, I struggle. This is not easy for me. It is not easy. You are constantly cleaning up the narcissist's mess. God bless.